All right, so here is a look at the new April 2022 launch. So exciting, full of stamps, stencils, and a background stamp. You guys are kind of getting a little sneak peek, but let's go through all of the different products one by one and take a little bit of a closer look at them. And then I'll be showing the samples and doing some crafting as well. All right, starting off with the first product. This one is called Scaled, and I absolutely love this. It is a peel apart background stamp. So like a lot of the background stamps in my line, you can either use it as a full background, just like this, and it's got the printing on it right on the surface of the cling, which is really important to me kind of when indexing the stamps. So I like to have that kind of label there. And then it also can be used separately. So you've got these sections in this background stamp that peel apart so you get rows of these beautiful scales. Check that out. And you'll see in today's sample why this is so important. I've got two here because they kind of interlock and they're a little bit different. So if you want to use them all throughout your card and get colored stripes, that's so much fun. I know that some companies will have every single stripe peel apart. I know in, in the uh, last stripe stamp we had that because in some stamps it's important to have every single piece peel apart. But in some stamps like this scaled background, you can see that these are a little bit thinner in sections and having every single one peel apart would be kind of a nightmare. So we just made it to be two so that you can kind of repeat that stamping all the way down. And I'll show how to do that a little bit later in today's live. But we really care about making them easy to use for you guys. So this is still in two larger chunks. And then there also is one little piece that peels out that is just one of the little scales. And then of course you can kind of repeat the design using this as well create some interlocking scales down your card using every different color for them. And I see some people in the comments already, Un or Kimberly said that the, the scales would make great dragon skin, which I agree, and it's great for some of the other things you'll see during today's live as well. So when it comes to using these as a full background stamp, again, all you need to do is just kind of piece it in like a puzzle and then press down on your clear sheet. And then same thing with this one. Now, when it comes to a piece that kind of is a little bit tighter to push in. I'm gonna push it in as far as I can go. And then I'm going to lift up my stamp and kind of peel back the acetate a little bit, peel back that stamp. And what it's gonna do is just kind of help fit that right back into place. We just wanna make sure that it fits nice and tight so that it's easy to stamp as a full background again. And you guys can see it's very easy to put back together and use as the full background. Now, one other thing that I wanted to mention is you guys will um, know there is this kind of clear piece that's on the back of my background stamps. Now, the background stamps come with a clear sheet that's kind of a little bit larger than the stamp. I take my scissors and I cut right around it and I leave the stamp on this clear sheet. And this is how I stamp it. I actually just lay it down on my work surface, I'll ink it up, and then I'll press my cardstock into it. And again, I'll share more about that later in today's live. But that just makes sure that your stamp is going to stay intact as I use it. And I store it just like this in my storage bin as well. All right, so that is scaled. I love it. There are lots of ideas in the comments. It can also be used as shingles on a roof. I totally agree. I was thinking about like a gingerbread sort of house when I was stamping it in a bunch of different colors. And I thought that that was super cool. You could also use it like this and kind of create almost like a rainbow pattern. I know that's been super popular to have these kind of like um, rainbow type designs. So there's lots of different things you could do with this, but I'm absolutely in love with the solid and bold design that this gives and the fact that you're able to peel apart each individual stripe. So important to me to have that super versatile stamp. All right, next we have the tiny diamonds stencil. I love these tiny stencils. We've kind of had a series going with these tiny stencils. We've had tiny circles. We've had tiny hearts, and now we have tiny diamonds to kind of complete off this little series that I've created. And who knows, in the future we might make a couple more, but these have been so, so incredibly versatile. If you guys have seen what you can do with these, I'm sure you're gonna want the tiny diamond stencil as well. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna share about it in today's video, I'll share about it a little bit later, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just this very small design stencil which is super important. I think in the world of design, you know, we've got stencils that are kind of a little bit larger. They've got a little bit larger scale design on them. Um, different things like these sort of stencils, they've got kind of a large design on them. 
And so when I was going through and designing new products, I was like, I want small design stencils because I want to be able to use them on my cards and kind of color in things and use them as textures and backgrounds. And so I'll share more about that in today's video as well. But you'll see these used in a lot of my videos. They're a great basic to have, and I've been reaching for these two so often. So I'm excited to throw this one in my collection as well and use it along with these. They are so much fun. And of course, the edges are made kind of a little bit jagged every other so that you can take the stencil and move it over and fill it in. So if you want to use this on a scrapbook page or something a little bit larger, maybe a mixed media project, this is such a great texture stencil as well. And yes, guys, sometimes the basic shapes are some of my favorites. I didn't really understand that at the beginning of design. I was like, it's got to take me hours. It's got to be hand drawn. And sometimes these stencils are some of my favorites because they're the most useful. So yes, I'm excited. So excited about this one as well. All right, guys, let's move on into the next one. This one is a maker stencil. I absolutely love these line of maker stencils. So far, we've got the scene maker, flower maker, cake maker, and they've been incredibly popular. What a maker stencil is, is it's basically just a stencil that's going to have different pieces in it that layer up together to create different images or scenes on your card making projects. And the really awesome part about this as well is it comes with masks. So you've got masks for both of the mermaid tails and the seahorse as well. So they'll come inside here and you just have to peel it out there and then you have the masks as well. So what's really awesome about this is you've got the two tails, you've got the different details on the tails that you can fill it in with. There's the seahorse and the details you can have, some bubbles, and of course these scales. And these scales are super awesome to of course use as sort of like your own little tiny stencil. We've got kind of a small little version of the scales which is exciting. I like to create designs and stencils like this as well because you can go in with your sort of lunar pastes and be able to easily put it through a stencil. So that's why I designed this. I'll share a little bit more about this later and how you can kind of make it a little bit more versatile, but so exciting to have this stencil. All right, guys, next we have this one. And I think that you guys are gonna look at this a little bit weird at first, but I think you're gonna be super excited when you see it in the samples. Because once you see this stencil come to life, I think you'll all understand it. I think when I created it, a lot of um, people didn't really understand it. Um, I know my mom looked at it like, what the heck is that? So basically you get four different masks in these weird kind of oblong abstract shapes, which I love having the masks because then you can create your design and then mask it off and create an ink blended background around it as well. But then you also have the, um, of course, regular stencil with the cutouts. And so these are super great to use behind images and create sort of, like it says, abstract backgrounds. You can use either one of these shapes or several of the different shapes together. Maybe use it with your tiny stencils as well and put those behind to create some texture. There's lots of different things you could do with this, but creating these fun abstract backgrounds are super easy to do when using this sort of stencil. I like the color blocked look that it gives, and you'll see that as we create with it. And yes, of course, Kimberly, again, is coming up with lots of great ideas. She says, that's a great stencil because you can really do anything with this. And yes, exactly. You could do so much with this sort of stencil. There's lots of different kind of um, things you can come up with, right? Like if you want to create a, a little pond, like someone's saying in the comments, Roberta says she sees a frog pond. Of course, there is tons of different things you could do with these abstract shapes. And that's what I love about them. Just a little bit of imagination and you can really bring this to life. All right, now let's move on into the clear photopolymer stamp sets. These are six by nine stamp sets. They're quite large and they are packed with designs. This first one is called Pirate Party. I absolutely love these images in here and they're so great to use for children's birthday cards or just really fun kind of pirate themed cards as well. I absolutely love these images in here. There is a little guide pirate. He's got a sword. I love his little hat as well. Then you've got this girl pirate with her parrot. I love that little parrot. We've got the parrot separately facing the other way so you can put him on the hat or on top of the boat as well. I love this little boat and of course you could stamp the skull inside if you want to or you could just kind of leave it a little bit more plain. We've got the treasure chest, some shark fins, this really awesome little eel or creature in the water. I love that. We've got a compass. 
we've got a large map image and this one is so incredibly fun you guys can see i used it a little bit so it's slightly stained but it's got a lot of the different images from the set in here so i love that it's got the little boat the different eel there the compass in the corner it's got some of the shark fins there's a mermaid sitting there a little x towards the treasure and then there's tons of little tiny details so you guys can see there's the macrobe mountains um Artie's den which if you guys know Artie, there's a little bear in there um the jinx to jungle vicious volcano there is tons of amazing images in here and in fact let me go in I just wanted to share because I know you can kind of sort of not see that as well because it's stained let me pull up the new one check out all of that detail in there I wanted to make sure you guys get a good look at this because I spent a good two hours on that to make sure that the map was really awesome and super detailed as I was drawing it so I'm so excited to kind of see that come to life and there's lots of different amazing things you could do with the map image. Of course, you'll see in the samples, I created a little map with it, which is so exciting. But stamping it all around a background could be super cool. It's just a great image that goes along with the pirates. All right. Then we've got some really great sentiments to go along with. I love the birthday sentiments. A little birdie told me it was your birthday. Um, thanks for guiding me in the right direction. I treasure our friendship. Walk the plank. Thanks a loot. You are so awesome. How are you? Ahoy matey and yo ho yo ho. So I absolutely love this. It's been a great addition to the line and I think that the images in it are just so playful and fun. And I love, like I said, that it's kind of sort of birthday themed so you can really kind of get a good use out of this stamp. Yes, lots of you guys are saying that the focal map stamp is so cool. Um, stamping it in a lighter color, uh, making a cute invitation backdrop for it, like almost like a background. Yeah, I think that would be amazing. And you'll see, you'll see that in today's, um, today's samples as I share those. And then the last photopolymer stamp set is called Owl Buddies. I absolutely love this one too, guys. So basically we've got this larger owl image here on a branch. We've got the mirrored owl image, but also I made it a little bit smaller. I added a little tuft of hair to him. So he's like the little kid. I love that we've got kind of both of those so you can put them on a card together, hanging in from each side, which I love. This one is so cute. The large owl flying. I think that one's adorable. Then we've got this owl, which is more of like a folk art image. If you guys are into more sophisticated cards, or if you guys like playful images and you like to kind of switch it up sometimes, I really like to make them super versatile and give you guys some options. So this one is more for the colorists who I want to go in, color them in, and get this really beautiful, more sophisticated owl. We've got a branch in case you want to make him sit on the branch or in case you want to put a branch in your scene by itself. Then we've got this really great solid background images. I've loved doing these more solid backdrops. Um, inside the photopolymer stamp set because it creates almost a little scene that if you purchase this set You're really able to use it as a little scene and I wanted to share like check that out So that is going to really cover an a2 size card, which is what I love about it I like to create quite large images in here So that it's easy for you to just put one or two focal images and have a beautiful finished card in the end Huh my camera seems to not be focusing on this as much. All right, and then we've got some sentiments here We'll have I will see you soon. Congrats, grad, which I love that we put the graduation cap in there as well. So you can really use this for graduation cards. Again, I think that like having those certain images and specific sentiments that are really working great makes it so that you can really send easy cards. I really like to make sure that the sentiments in my set, you know, some of them can be fun and playful, but I like to make sure you guys have a good assortment. Me and my mom like spend so much time thinking of sentiments almost sometimes even more than the stamp set because we always say like would you send that on a card like it, would you really want that on a card and i think we really think of stuff that you would want to at least put on a card so you're wise beyond your years if you're creating sort of like a, a little framed image too bless this nest could be really fun i will always love you you're a hoot and hoot hoot hooray have a great birthday so again, just great images that go along with the stamp sets. And I see some comments asking about dies. These um, stamp sets have coordinating dies. They are cut files along on the site. So sorry, they're not actual dies. 
There are digital cut files that you can buy at Ranger Inc. So if you throw these two in your cart, you can also decide if you want the digital cut files and those will work along with your Cricut or Silhouette machines. So that's why you see 199 next to these. You'll have to just choose the stamp or the digital cut file as well and add those to your cart as you're purchasing. So that is why those two have that on the page as well. All right. Well, that is the new release, but I also wanted to pull in a couple of older stamp sets because I think it is so, so important to revisit old stamp sets as we go along and really get use out of these as well. Because I like to always encourage you guys, and you know, you spent money on these stamps. I like to always encourage you to pull back out your stamps and get more use out of them. And in fact, I'm even thinking of one more, which I'm gonna pull out right now. Yep, all right, so let's go through these as well because I think it's so important. I think um, when I'm designing these stamps, I always like to bring back old stamps and recreate with these, and you'll see these in a lot of the samples too. And these were really like released at the pretty beginning of my career. So if you guys haven't seen these yet before, we've added them to the top of the Ranger website right below the release. So that in case if you wanna add them onto your order or you want images to go along with some of the things that you're buying today, these are super fun. And of course, if you have them in your collection, I wanted to show them too, just to remind you to pull them back out. So here we have the Timber stamp. I absolutely love this one. It's birch trees. And of course, this one is a peel apart image. So you've got lots of these different trees that peel apart separately. I'm not gonna do it, but you guys can see those cuts in there. So like these two come separate. There's a grouping of three and then a grouping of two. And of course you can use it like this, make the owls kind of sitting on it like that. Or you can kind of turn it like this and have it just as a background in the background of your card. So I love this image and timber is really awesome. All right, someone in the comments said they think Ranger might have run out of it. Check scrapper.com as well um, if Rangers run out of it, but timber is a really fun one. So that one, in case you guys have in your collection, definitely pull that one out. This one is called Wild Waves and Wild Waves is so much fun. It originally came out with the surfing stamp set, which I'm gonna show next, but Wild Waves is a really great one. Of course, each section here is going to pull apart. So you get kind of individual waves going both directions, which is so, so awesome. And I hand drew these. I think they're just so fun and playful to go along with your images. And of course, along with the mermaids, I think these ones are so much fun to create with. And the pirates could be really great as a background as well with the boat. So, so much fun. All right, Ranger says Timber is in stock, so be sure to check over at rangerinc.com if you want to check for Timber. It is on the page. It's just a little bit further down in the site because I forgot to even tell them about that one. But yes, Timber is on that page, so you'll just have to scroll around on my design page. All right, Surf's Up is a really fun stamp set as well. There's a different surfboard in here. You can add stripes to your surfboards, different designs, like that fun floral background. And then you've got these surfer bodies that you can add the heads down to. We also have some other stamp sets like dudes and dudettes that have more heads that you can attach onto the bodies. We got Artie, you can make him go surfing, some sunscreen, some different images you can add along with them. Of course, this dog which you can add on the surfboard and lots of great surf sentiments. The thing I love about this is of course, ride the wave and a lot of the different like seize the day sentiments are gonna work really well with lots of the different images from the new sets as well. So I wanted to show those. And then this one is gonna work perfectly along with it. Now I only had a stained version of the stamp set so I couldn't really show you a new one, but I'll try to show you the detail in these images. So you've got a unicorn and a bear which you can attach onto the mermaid tail. You've got two different mermaids and merman. And then of course, some fun little kind of uh, detailed background images that's some sort of seaweed. Um, lots of different little images you can use along with the pieces. But I really wanted to also share the sentiments. You mer make me happy, have a fantastic day, we mermaid for each other, you're mermazing. Like those are gonna work so well along with the new mermaid maker stencil. I love going back, like I said, because of course we didn't give you any new sentiments in this. We didn't wanna create a whole new sentiment set just for this, but go back in your sets and you can find lots of great, amazing sentiments and different images. Of course, if you wanna use the mermaids along with it, like there's so, so much you can do with it. So check that out. And um, there is lots of amazing things you could do with it. 
All right, guys, so now that I've shared all of the different um, products, we're gonna share the different samples. So let's start off with this card here. I love this one. It has the amazing scaled background stamp. And of course, here you can see that I peeled apart each individual stripe section itself. So you can peel those apart separately, and then I just stamped them all individually, each row, so that you can have each one be a different color. I love it. It looks so unique. It looks like your own patterned paper. Um, that's one thing I love about the peel apart stamps. Not many stamps on the market are gonna peel like that. So of course there's lots of mermaid stamps, but I've only seen ones that really have the solid stamp, right? But this one allows you as the creator to go in and decide whether you want to stamp it all solid and in the background, or you wanna create your own standout design like this one. You really have that opportunity yourself to go in and do that. I think, I think this mermaid uh, scaled stamp is gonna be one of the most popular from the release just because of all the amazing things you can do with it. Yes, Una. Una says, there's the colorfulness we know. I think sometimes, too, people get a little bit worried about the background stamps because they're all like jet black printing on the background. So don't be afraid of that. Just imagine it in color, and you're going to see lots of amazing designs you can do with it. And then here I use a sentiment that just says, follow your dreams, and don't let anyone stop you. This is from my Encouraging Word stamp set. It's got a bunch of big, bold sentiments that are in my handwriting, and I absolutely love how that looks along with this stamp. Like I said, don't be afraid to scroll down on that Ranger page and, and find older stamp sets or find stuff from your collection and use it along with new stuff. It really helps. All right, this one. This is the new Whimsical Ovals. And do you guys see now how amazing this is, right? So all I had to do was just go in and kind of overlap some of those in the center. I love that wherever you overlap the ovals, you're gonna get sort of a darker greenish yellow in there. Here you're gonna get a little bit of a purple when I overlapped that. And then you can kind of see it creates this kind of cool abstract look. And you've got those kind of wonky edges and those a little bit of like weird shapes. I love that they're not perfect. I love that it's not just a perfect circle that you're gonna put behind it, right? It makes it a little bit more wonky and playful and fun, which is so amazing. And yes, someone in the comments is saying um, you could use this with lunar paste totally to get that amazing shine. You can see the mermaid tails, the, the end of the tails there are done with lunar paste. I'm having a little bit of a hard time picking it up on camera, but you can kind of see that shine that it's giving. It's just beautiful in real life as well. And then we've used the scales and the mermaid maker tails in order to go in here and just create these two mermaid tails that are going on the card. As well, we have the Your Mermazing sentiment from the Mythical Mermaids stamp set. And I love that one. Just down there, it works great with the mermaid tails. All right. And then we have the mermaid tails along with wild waves. So again, go in and use your old stuff. I'm encouraging you guys. It's so important to use the old stuff with the new stuff. And, and even if you don't get anything today, even if you're like, mm, you know, I've got some of the older stuff, pull that out and get inspired. I hope that today's live really inspires you to get more use out of them as well. So here I used wild waves. I did some ink blending in the background. I heat embossed the wild waves. Then I went in and I cut one of the waves out, just fussy cut it really quickly around there. And then I used the Mermaid Maker stencil to create these two mermaid tails. And the really awesome part about that then is you're able to just tuck that in between the waves. And how fun is that? Right, guys? So think. <laughs> think outside of the box and, and use your stuff. Don't let it just sit in the drawer. And then I used We Mermaid for each other. That is from the Mythical Mermaid stamp set. And yeah, pulling together the combo of products together just really creates this beautiful, stunning background. All right, I love how that one turned out. I think you guys are really enjoying that one as well. Yeah, Wild Waves is a super fun background stamp. Um, I just think it's beautiful. All right, next one. We're going in with, of course, the scaled background. Here I used the scaled background on just a blue piece of cardstock. I tone on tone stamped it. I think I used a little bit of clear skies to stamp it down. And then I used the Pirate Party stamp set. I just stamped the little girl. I uh, went in and I watercolored her. I, again, I love her little parrot there. I think it's just so cute. There's so much incredible detail that goes into these little stamps when I draw them. You guys can see that. And like even down to the little details on the, uh, or on the parrot is just so cute. All right, let's see if it's gonna focus here. <laughs> and then um, I have the sentiment that just says, a little birdie told me it's your birthday. 
I think that is so cute. What a fun birthday card for a little girl. How adorable would this be? Right? And I love that this is just such a playful and fun stamp set, right? We can't go too serious. We can't get too far away from the hand-drawn and fun, playful look of my line. And I think that this one really is just so adorable. And I just created a little banner here by cutting it out. I just cut little pieces and then I cut a little, um, a little line in the middle and then you meet both ways and you can create a little banner there. So that's not a die. It's just me cutting that out and adding that down onto the card. Yes, the parrot is wearing a bandana. I'm so glad someone noticed that. Kimberly, yeah, it's wearing a little bandana and it's so, so cute. Um, Kelly said that she just sorted out her stamps and she put the ones that she hasn't used into a new basket that she can use in the next couple months. Yeah, I encourage you guys to, to, if you buy stuff or if you have old stuff like I'm showing you today and you wanna use it, put it in a different basket that's right next to you and you'll be encouraged to use it a little bit more. So here I use Wild Waves again. I heat embossed that. I went in with a couple different colors of my Salmon Hurley Create ink, and I sort of dipped it into the background here to get this cool kind of watercolor texture on my background. I think it's so much fun. And then I just went in with a little bit of Midnight Snack, and I blended around the edges to add a little bit of darkness and draw your eye to the center. Then here I added down a little bit of vellum to kind of um, to separate it from the background that's a little bit more distracting. That's a great tip. If a background is a little bit distracting, don't be too afraid of it. Put down a piece of vellum in sort of an oval or a rectangle shape, or you could use sort of a piece of cardstock. I don't love to cover up the whole background though, so that's why I used vellum. And then you can add your images down on top and it's gonna sort of soften the background behind it. So here I just used the sailboat from the Pirate Party stamp set and I stamped down a Hoi Matey and I thought that one was just so cute. So, so much fun as well. All right. Then we have the Pirate Party stamp set again. Here I stamped down the map, all right? I stamped it down in a little bit of Gur ink, and then I went in and I used a little bit of Gur to kind of, um, to kind of distress and make the map look a little bit older. I went in a little bit lighter in some areas and darker in the others. You can see I really went a little bit heavier on the edges to get that darker effect. I also went in with the decal trimmer. This is Tim's decal trimmer. And then I also went in with my scissors on the edge and I just kind of roughed it up a little bit. Um, to make it a little bit less even. And that's gonna kind of catch the edge of the cardstock and make it a little bit darker on there. It makes it look like a little bit of like this kind of weathered map look and I really love that effect. So of course I added that down on a little bit of an angle there. Um, I love that fun little uh, kind of vintage looking map then. And then I just went in and colored in these two little guys. I love watercoloring with my Simon Hurley Create inks and it is so much fun to add a bunch of color down onto these guys and if I have some time today, I'll be sure to share how to kind of color in images like this and get great results because I know some people struggle with it. I've shared it a couple times but I love to kind of reshare my tips for anybody that's new because um, there's lots of great tips to make sure you get great coloring. And then of course I used a little banner again and I just did the a little birdie told me it's your birthday. I love that sentiment guys, that, that one, it just makes it so useful for this card. Of course, if you have a kid in your life or a, a grandkid or, or a friend that's got a little kid um, to send it up for a birthday, I think that would make them smile. Heck, I, I, would even, I would even love this birthday card, that would make me smile. So it doesn't need to just be a kid, but it's so much fun, right? So playful and, and easy and fun. All right, now moving into the owl stamp set. I love owl buddies. It was so fun to create and to create with now. Um, and I have a whole video coming. In, in fact, there's, there's lots of videos coming with all those different samples I created. But I have a video coming really how to share how to stamp down these more solid backgrounds because there's a couple different ways to do it to get beautiful results, whether you want a more abstract look or whether you want kind of a clean and blended look like this one. So I got lots of tips sharing how to do that. But I've stamped down the oval image. I stamped down the owl on his branch, colored him in really easily, added him down in some foam tape. And there we have a really quick and simple card. Like I said, I love to make these, these um, focal images quite a bit larger. You can see like the pirates pretty much fill up um, like half of the card as well because I like to make it so that you can just stamp down like one or two images as a focal point and have that be like really standing out on your card rather than having like a really small image you have to stamp a million times. That's not really my thing. I like to have one image that really stands out. All right, and then next we have the same backdrop that I use. I love, again, like I said, to include this because it's like you can really stamp that on all your different cards and it gives a great grounding point. Whereas instead of having to like look through your collection and be like, oh, what can I use with the owl, you know, what works with him? Um, this is a really great one. So I went in with some lighter inks like Breakup Blue, 
And I think I moved into a little bit of no diving and then a little bit of midnight snack on the edge to stamp this down and get some really great depth and dimension in the image. Then I used the little flying owl and the little sentiment that says, I will see you soon. And I added it down onto a craft card base. I love this kind of craft colored card base. I think it works great with the owls and, and images that are a little bit more outdoorsy if you wanna give them a little bit of grunge. Um, but I think this one is just so incredibly fun. All right. And last but not least, like I said, if you guys are more into kind of coloring more detailed images, this folk art owl is really a great one for you. I stamped on the sentiment that just says, you are wise beyond your years. I used this really fun folk art owl and I colored him in. You guys can see there's like different colors in each one of those little flowers. Like, I don't know if you guys can see, but there is tons and tons and tons of detail in that stamped image, like tons of little dots, tons of little flowers and, and different things that really make that image stand out. So don't be sleeping on this owl. I think this owl is so much fun and he's kind of more sophisticated. And although he doesn't like completely match fully with the, the stylistic choices of the other owls, I think it's so much fun to use if you want a more sophisticated look on your cards. I like to get that different versatility. And then of course with this background, I wanted something just simple. So I went in with the tiny diamond stencil and you guys will be seeing a lot of that, like I said, using that with lunar paste, using that all over your cards. I think it's just a beautiful stencil that you're able to use like that and create a really fun and easy geometric background. All right, so there is all of the samples from the new release. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those. And now we're going to kind of jump into the products individually and really share how they work and um, kind, of, kind of take a, an overlook at each product. I'm gonna really go over the products that I think might be a little bit more difficult for the user to use, starting off with the Mermaid Maker Stencil. I just like to kind of walk you guys through these sort of things because like, it's really important for me that when you get your hands on these, you know exactly how to use it. Like I said, of course, there will be more videos coming out with these, but I want you guys to see how to use them on the first day. Of course, if you're on the fence, if you're making your decisions, anything like that, it really is helpful to see and I know that. All right, so I'm gonna take out a piece of Stark White cardstock. This is just my um, my cardstock. The reason why I love Stark White cardstock, let me share it, because I've shared this in the past, and I know that some people don't really know this, but if you're making an order today and you want to try out Stark White cardstock, here is the reason why I love it. All right, so this was the paper that I used before I tried my Stark White cardstock. I used this for my whole crafting life up until I had my product line and until I had a line of inks, right? And it's this fine color, it's, it's a fine color of white. It looks pretty decently white until you compare it up to the Stark White cardstock. And then it looks a little bit more cream colored for sure. And then also, um, I thought that it did great with blending. I was like, this cardstock is amazing with blending. But you guys can see, this is the difference. Some cardstocks have sort of a little coating on it. And this one, it doesn't even feel like it has a real coating on it either. But it does, because this is where my ink would stop. I added the same amount of ink on both of these cardstocks. Of course, if you want on my cardstock, you can create a lighter effect. Just go in and, and lighten up the ink, soften it up a little bit. But if you want, you can layer up the ink and get that dark effect. And that is so, so important to me to have a cardstock that takes the ink super well. So here you can see this I've added the same amount. I think I added like five layers of ink down and it just goes to that light color and it kind of starts rubbing off and that's where you get all these fingerprints. So if you're getting fingerprints on your cardstock, that's how you know. Your, your cardstock isn't really taking the ink all that well. And then with this one, I add the same amount of ink and you can see that dark, vibrant intensity. So that is why I have the cardstock. That's kind of my long, <laughs> long um, explanation. But yeah, that is why I created it. I tried so many different cardstock samples before doing it. But I wanna show that because some people give me comments and they're like, my ink doesn't look like yours. My ink blending doesn't look nearly as good. Just try out this cardstock. I'm not really trying to sell it to you, but like, I think you're gonna have a great experience. And of course, if you don't, like, it comes in a pack of 10. So, so it's your choice to kind of make that decision, but test it up and compare it to the cardstock you have at home and see see if it's something you think is worth investing in. But I think it's, it's something that I've used kind of for the entirety of my line now because it's been so important to me to have a cardstock that works well with the inks. All right, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of scrapbook.com's mint tape. I know they're in here and, and I love their mint tape because it doesn't rip my cardstock and it's great for masking off different areas of the stencils. Especially with these sort of maker stencils, really when it comes to the maker stencils, we give you as many images as we can on top of this stencil. And that's super important to me so that you guys have a ton of versatility, right? But 
if we're going in here, of course you could just avoid it with your blending brush, but if we're going in and adding our ink down, all you wanna do is just tape off these images. It's not too big of a deal, but we just give you all those images so that you have tons of options in your set. We try to fit as much as we can on this stencil. All right. So, going in, a little bit of mint tape here, and then let's go in and start my blending. All right, so I'm gonna blend out these little guys. I think I wanna do, I think I wanna do a different color tail than I've been doing because if you guys saw, you will know that I have been doing lots of um, mermaid tails and purples and pinks, but I think today I'm gonna use a little bit of Psyche. I love this color. I'm gonna go in with a blending tool. I use these little Gina K blending brushes and um, one thing that I'm gonna do with them to just make sure that it is going to have the right color is just go in with a little cloth, bring in my Psyche and just kind of wipe it off until it goes back to the Psyche color. Could I use it with all my greens? So that's a good tip if you want to just make sure that your um, colors are gonna kind of come back to normal. All right, so I'm gonna go in here onto this large one with a little bit of Psyche. We're going a little experimental with these colors, but I think this one's gonna be so much fun. You guys will see, see my plan once I am done blending this out. All right. Tracy says she can she can vouch for this dark white cardstock. It handles water well. Yeah, I use it for um, all my watercoloring. So if I if I do share watercoloring later in today's live, I do all my watercoloring on the cardstock too. It's kind of crazy. Like every technique, I I really do just stick to the dark white cardstock, um, and I love that it's just kind of my go-to for pretty much everything. I know a lot of people says it works good with uh, Copics too. Like there's a lot that people love about it. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this blending brush. This has Tropical Tango on it. Um, I'm not even going in with any extra Tropical Tango. I just want a little bit to add just a slight amount of green to both um, kind of different areas of the mermaid tail and just add a little bit of variation there. All right, I love that little teal color there that we've got going. And then, let's see, what should we do with this one? I think we'll stick with pink for this one. I like the pink look. And for this, I'm gonna use a little bit of rosy cheeks. Go in and blend this out. So what are your guys' favorite items of this new release? I would love to hear. It's always so fun to hear and see what you guys are creating with and what you enjoy the most. It kind of helps create new stuff, but also, um, like I, I'm just excited to, to see what you've designed because I've been holding on to these products for so long, right? And um, once I get to see them kind of come out into the world and, and what you guys love, it's like super exciting for me to see. And sometimes it's something I would have never guessed. Like sometimes you guys enjoy the things that I, I just didn't think you were gonna understand, which I love. I love that, you know, I hope that those whimsical ovals that you guys love those as well because they create such fun backgrounds too. All right, so. Going in with just my cloth, I like to go in and just kind of wipe off these little areas. It's super easy to do. My ink cleans off really easily with just a little bit of water as well. That's one thing I love about my ink is it's not gonna stain. It's really great. All right. How fun is that one? So of course, I always say with these maker stencils um, that like, you can stop whenever you want, right? If you love these mermaid tails as is, you don't need any of the details, totally stop right here. Like you don't need to keep going. You don't need to keep using these different layers. I know that some people think that layering stencils are a little bit difficult, but we made it as easy as possible so that hopefully you guys will kind of understand how these layer. So next we're gonna go in with the tail portions and these are super easy. There's a large, large tail detail section and there is a smaller one. And of course the larger one goes with the larger mermaid. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of tape that down right next to it. Peggy says um, owls and stencils. Um, Una is talking about a new cloth. It, it, I've had this cloth for a while. I've been using it kind of along with it. I don't use it for as much ink stuff. This is my old, old cloth. Yeah, it's, my old cloth is gross. I, that one needs, to, uh, one needs to go. But at this point it's like a luck charm. Like it's like a good luck charm, you know? So I, mean, I don't know if I can get rid of it. All right, so um, for this, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of lunar paste. Now, when it comes to lunar paste, 
I'm gonna share a couple of different ways to apply it so that you guys really have all the options in the world. Now you could use some different colors of Lunar Paste, right? We have Psych, which is gonna match this really well. We also have Minty Fresh, which could be beautiful on top of this, I think. And there's also Later Gator, which could be a really beautiful green, actually, that would be on top of there. But I think I'm gonna go with Psych. I'm gonna keep it light. I love Psych, it's one of my favorite colors. So I think that's what I'm gonna use for today's um, work. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my palette knife first. And I'm just going to bring it in, bring in literally just a tiny amount of paste. Now, here's, here's what really depends on what you wanna do, right? So you could go in with a palette knife like this and go in on your project. Or you could go in with a blending tool. The blending tool, if you guys have seen Lunar Paste, is gonna give you kind of a flatter result. It's gonna give you great shine, but it's gonna kind of not give you any texture. Whereas if you want a little bit of texture, you can always go in with your palette knife and just spread that through. And you can still do it really thin. I just have taken out just the tiniest little amount because all you need is a little tiny bit for this. All right. Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, so once we've got that, we can kind of lift this off. And we can go in and clean our surface really quick. Super easy to clean off your lunar paste area. And then I'm going to lift off my stencil. And how cool is that? It's super easy to do. Um, with the lunar paste there to add a little bit of depth and shine to your image. All right, now I'm not gonna do this other one because I just realized actually right now, we're gonna have to wait for this lunar paste to dry in order to do anything else. So I'm gonna leave this one as is. I would wait for this to dry. You can heat it with a heat tool if you want to, but I'm not gonna share that on today's live because I find that heat tools are kind of loud and a little bit obnoxious sometimes and, and I don't want you to have to sit here and watch paint dry with me. So all I'm gonna do is just clean off this stencil and we'll then step into how to create the scales on the pink one. All right. But of course, if you were doing the pink one as well, all you would do is just add the little tail down there with a little bit of lunar paste. All right. But next, I wanted to share how to add the scale design because there really is two ways to add the scales down. All right. And I'm going to kind of share them in today's live. So to add the scales down, if you want to keep your stencil fully intact, you could, and you could add the scales down like this, and I'm gonna have to literally, you know what? Sometimes I'm not thinking as much, but we'll just do this. <laughs> that's great. We can set this off to the side, and as this dries, you guys are gonna see, that's gonna get some beautiful shine. I love the light green psych color. It is so, so beautiful on um, those mermaid tails. How cool is that? And then, Let's go in with the tail. Now, like I said, there's a couple different ways to do it. The one that I've pretty much been using is going in, just putting the scales on top here, going in with a blending brush and or a blending tool. You can either use either one. In fact, last night I was finding that I was gonna have more luck with the blending tool because I found you don't go out of the lines as much because it's foam, so you're really easily able to see where the edge is, but you can go in with either one. I've been enjoying the little detail brushes as well. Both of them work really well. But I'm just gonna go in and blend this through. All right. And like I said, it's super easy to just get right up to the edge there. And check out how easy that is. So that's what I've been doing for this mermaid tail. And I think that's probably what most of you guys are gonna do. I can't imagine um, most of you guys doing what what I'm gonna share, but you totally could. All right, so the one thing I'm going to share here is that you could do this. I don't think many of you are, like I'm saying, but it's gonna give you more versatility with your stencil. And yes, I'm gonna bring out the scissors. I know lots of you guys scream when people cut out their stamps or when people cut out their stencils or anything like that. All right, but that's what we're doing today. So we're just gonna go in here and cut this right down here. Super simple, super easy to do. Doesn't take much brain power. 
and just cut it right down. And how many of you guys are screaming in the comments right now? <laughs> All right, but what this does is it makes your stencil more versatile. Of course, you're gonna have a little bit of a wonky looking stencil, but not many people are going to be looking at your stencils, right, while you're creating. But the really awesome part about this is now this becomes your own little tiny stencil. Of course, if you want to use it, like I showed with the tiny stencils, you can go in with those and create really easy little backgrounds with them. If you want to repeat this design all over your background, if you don't wanna to have to worry about this whole stencil as you're creating, you don't have to. Of course, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep mine in my stencil bag and store them both together like this. It's super easy to keep them together. But here's why I love this so much, all right? We're gonna create another mermaid tail really easily. All right, so we'll go in and I just wanted to share this in today's live because I think this is so important. If people are like, well, I don't have those little blending tools, I don't wanna do that. Here is what's so important that I think not many of you guys are gonna really think of, but it's, it's so helpful. It's, it's what I do with pretty much everything. All right, so we're gonna go in and do the same sort of blending that we did on here. Let's use, what color should we use again? Let's use the, um, you know what? We're gonna use something a little different. We're gonna use a Tropical Tango, but I'm gonna start off a little bit lighter. And like I said, this is why I love Simon Hurley Create Cardstock because you can layer. So if I wanna start off with a little bit of a lighter color, I totally can. I'm going in here with a little bit of Tropical Tango. And once that's all complete, then this is where this stencil comes in handy because we've already got this area taped off, right? So this area of the tail is masked off. So when we add these scales, we can so easily add them down without having to worry about anything else that's going on in the background, right? So I still do like to tape off the little area where the tail is, super simple, because I just like to make sure that I'm going to be able to still add that tail detail. But then again, like I said, this is what I love about my cardstock. I can go in and reload the brush with lots more ink. And then all I'm gonna do, the stencil is still down there. The mermaid um, scale stencil is on top now. And all I'm gonna do is blend this all throughout. Still using my big blending tool, getting tons of coverage, not being afraid of the edge there, and really getting tons and tons of color down. And check that out. How much cooler is that, right? Because you don't have to worry about it. You're not careful around the edge. Your color is all even down on the surface. Your edges aren't lighter because you were trying to stay away from them. So there is two different options to use with this mermaid stencil. And you guys can decide, right? If you want to keep your stencil all intact, which I respect, I totally do respect that. Um, um, yeah, let that, let your stencil stay together if you want that and, and be able to just, use smaller blending tools and be able to mask things off or just go in and cut that right apart and use it as um, kind of a mask and where you can kind of stencil through it. And then of course, I'll go on top of the little tail as well. And add that down. Check that out. So that is so, so easy to do. Lots of you guys are saying it's gonna be much easier by cutting the stencil. You know, I agree. And I think sometimes, see, it, it looks a little bit sloppier. It's not as clean. I think sometimes as makers, you need to really think about your products as where, um, you know, we might have designed it like this for price point and, and really not have thought of this until I was creating with it. And then I was like, well, it's gonna be so much better for the customer to just cut that out. Right, and there are gonna be people who I know are gonna be scared, and you don't have to cut that out. I'm not forcing anyone to do it. Um, just like if you have a stamp set and you want a part of your sentiment to be gone because you don't like a certain word that's in your sentiment, cut it out because you can always piece it back together. You can still use this stencil together in a set like this. You can still keep it in the same packaging, but it makes it so much easier as your maker when you're creating the projects to get beautiful and stunning results. And even like if I were to do that same technique where I layered this up, 
you're able to now spread lunar paste through your stencil and not worry about it going over the edges, right? Because it's masked off. So you can use more mediums to it. It really makes your whole stencil so, so much more versatile. So there you go. That was my tip. That was why I wanted to share the Mermaid Maker stencil. We'll see if I... Uh, We'll see if uh, Ranger likes that I encourage everyone to cut their stencil after the live, but I'm telling you guys, I think it makes it even more exciting and versatile to get more use out of it. All right, we'll set that off to the side, and then we will go in with more of our products. What else do you guys want to see today? I'd love to share some more stuff. I think I'm going to also share the tiny diamonds, and then I'll go into some of the owls as well, because I know you guys are loving the owls. So with the tiny diamonds, I wanted to share this quickly because there's a couple different things you could do with it, of course. Like all stencils, but I wanted to really share the uh, different way to use it. Now, Timothy makes a good point. He says, cut, cut it or purchase two stencils. Timothy, I like what you're thinking there. I like what you're thinking. Maybe that's what I should have told everyone. <laughs> all right, so with tiny diamonds, of course, you have lots of amazing uses for this. Like I said, you can do what I just shared. Like if you want to blend in this stencil and then you want to layer this over top while keeping that stencil on and add some diamonds in it, do that. If you have the, um, the stencil with the hot air balloons, that one is called Going Places. There's lots of different stencils in my line that have like larger areas in them that you can kind of stencil through like this one, and that's gonna be a great area to put these smaller designs. That's really why they were created, for, for things like that where we wanted to kind of... In one of my projects that I created with the owls that I went in and I used this stencil to just create a nice geometric background. And that is one thing I love to do with it. But I also wanted to show how to really step this stencil up a notch and bring it to a whole new level. All right, so I'm going to go in and start off by just taping down my stencil just taping it down to my surface. Make sure it's nice and centered. And then I'm gonna put a piece of tape right down there. All right, I think that's pretty good. All right, so then what I'm going to do is go in, let's use some pinks and orange. I got a comment the other day that told me that I use too much orange. <laughs> I like orange. <laughs> I used to not love orange, but I love these warm colors. I find that they make really bright and happy cards, and I think that sometimes happy cards are what's necessary and encouragement, so I do, I, I do love these warm colors, but you could use whatever colors you want. You don't need to shame anybody for what colors they use. <laughs> Alright, so just going in and quickly um, adding down some prom queen all over this stencil. It's super simple to just go in with a blending brush. Now, the thing that I'm going to mention is I do love using blending brushes for these. I don't love using the foam blending tools. And here's the reason why. Just specifically for this stencil and some other stencils that are smaller or detailed, right? Especially if you've got like little images like a star or a heart as well, which you'll see in the tiny line. These blending brushes have a ton of little bristles. And so with those bristles, you're able to get into all these little areas, right? Because the little bristles are going to hit the little crevices and cracks of your stencils. But when it comes to um, like a foam, you might not get the corners of this and then it might start looking like circles, right? So that is why I want to share this. There's a time and place for everything. I love those foam tools for um, getting down like super solid and vibrant color on my background and, and getting beautiful blends. But when it comes to like really tiny, tiny stencils like the name of this one, I do like to use brushes to get into the little detailed areas and make sure that we got a crisp image. Hey, Kathy Zilski, how are you? Thanks so much for stopping by. And um, Scrapper.com says, to those people we say, mind your card. I agree, right? Because you, you, gotta, you gotta mind whatever color you wanna use, but I think every color deserves its recognition. And at first, honestly, I'm gonna be completely real here. I used to hate orange and now I like it. So we gotta give orange the recognition it deserves. All right, so there we have Prom Queen, right? I love how beautiful that one is. I think it is so stunning. And we're gonna go in now and shift this stencil. So you guys can see this is where it started, right? Move it like this and place it down. Now, when I shift this stencil, are we going to get a little bit of overlap? Yes. Is that what I want? Yes. I love when my stencils overlap like this because it's going to create a new color in between. And in fact, 
You know what? No, yeah, we'll use orange. We'll use orange. But we'll use a light orange. This one's going to be kind of a yellow orange, and it's going to create a little bit of a different kind of darker color in between the pink and orange. So the reason why I love when it overlaps is because it'll create new colors in between. All right, so just going in with a little bit of orange and coloring and blending this in. All right. And I like this light guppy color. I think it's super bright and cheerful. And I think it'll look great with this pink. But yes, Simon Hurley Create inks are a translucent dye ink. So whenever you, um, whenever you layer it over top with a different color, like you'll see me doing here with the pink, it's going to create a new color in between. And you saw that in some of the samples too. When we were layering the whimsical ovals and things like that, it creates such a beautiful new color in between where those two meet. All right. Just blending down. And then one last thing I'm going to do, right? Because it didn't reach all the way to the bottom there. I'm just going to reline it up with a bunch of those little diamonds, the little orange ones now, and then just go in and fill those in at the bottom. Super easy to do. Super simple. But sometimes when you're shifting your stencil, right, it's not going to cover the whole card. And there, if it's a geometric pattern that just repeats like this, it's super easy to continue the pattern and keep it going. Guys, check that out. If you guys know me, you know I'm obsessed with like Argyle patterns. I have a couple in my line already, and there might be a couple coming later. But um, <laughs> this is such a fun design. I love it. Yeah, I love that it kind of overlaps in some areas. So like I said, you get a little bit of a darker color there. But this just creates such a fun two-tone effect and such a bright, cheerful card that I think would be great to send. I could see like just a big sentiment on this, like a big bold sentiment. How beautiful would that be, right? And you could keep shifting this, right? You could keep shifting this stencil. You could fill it in. I did a whole background where I like, where I shifted it one more time right there to fill in that white space. And then I shifted it even one more time to fill in that white space. And you could use four different colors. It, it, does it trip out on your eyes? Yeah, it definitely makes a little, uh, a little bit of like a trippy background, but I really, really love it. Yes, I definitely did spill the tea, maybe on a, maybe on a future release, but uh, <laughs> I love these kind of diamond patterns. I think they're just gorgeous, and I think um, any geometric pattern like this, it just makes it so easy to use it on any sort of card and kind of reimagine it for different projects that you're creating with. So um, the tiny diamonds is such a fun one, and like I said, it completes those, the tiny pattern collection until I, until I decide to come up with more, but as, as for now, that is uh, the three that are in the line there. All right. So that is the tiny diamond stencil. And now I saw some comments of people telling me they really want to see the owls. All right. So you guys wanted to see these guys. I love the owls so, so much. And I wanted to share just some of my favorite coloring tips as I quickly watercolor in one of these owls. And again, I'm gonna throw links in the chat if you guys can see those. There's also gonna be a link in the description box. And using those links to shop today's release will help support me a lot, so I really appreciate it. This owl set is one of my favorites I've released in a while. I love the cartoony kind of playful look of these owls, and I'm gonna color one of these little guys in. So starting off, one of my favorite tips is by far going to be to emboss the image. This is what you need to start with, and if you guys watch my videos, you know that I pretty much emboss everything that I stamp. I use black ink and then I just throw over a layer of Ranger's clear embossing powder. I'm running a little bit low on it. I definitely need some more of that, but I use it in so many card projects. Pretty much everything that I stamp is um, gonna be heat embossed. And the reason why I do it on these images before I watercolor them as well is because I find that it keeps the water inside. It keeps the color inside. It's not gonna bleed as much. And if you're beginning, even if you're far into it, which I've been doing this for a while, um, I think that those lines really do help to have those barriers. All right? So that's my first and foremost tip. I think if you're struggling with it, um, bleeding into any areas of your image, I think having a image that is heat embossed is such an important tip. All right, then we're gonna create our little palette of watercolor. Oops, I accidentally clicked the wrong button on my camera, so you guys heard that lovely beep there. <laughs> um, good thing it didn't stop recording. And um, 
And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some color down onto my craft sheet. So I'm going to add down a little bit of gur. Oh, don't, no, don't yell at Ranger to send me any. I'll, uh, I'll buy some, don't worry. That was, a that was a reminder of me for in my head that I needed to buy some. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to go in with a little bit of over the moon as well. I love these light colors. This light yellow especially is just gorgeous. I love to use it to mix together with my brown to make things a little bit warmer as well. Love it. All right, and then I'll add down a couple other colors. I want to use a little bit of green for the branches, so I'll use just a little bit of overzealous. We'll throw in a little bit of orange, so we'll use a little bit of roar. I think that's good. Is that all I need? I think that's all I need. Maybe I'll throw in a little guppy too. I love this light orange, if you guys can tell. All right, and I'm working on a craft sheet um, or like a... You can use a palette as well that you want to work on. Just make sure your surface is nice and protected. All right, so then I'm going to go in with my brush here. I just like to use a paintbrush as well. These are Rangers Artist Brushes. I love the um, pack of artist brushes that they have. I like that they're not super expensive, which is one of my favorite parts. I don't love to spend a ton on brushes because I'm pretty mean to them and if I need to replace them um, that is a really an awesome tip to do so this comes in a pack of a bunch of different sizes I like the littler ones four is probably my favorite size um, and I like to use brushes when I watercolor now you're like oh what else would you use water brushes aren't my favorite things in the world just because I find that sometimes they disperse a little bit too much water so these are just my opinions I love water brushes when I travel or if I'm on the road or teaching classes or things like that, usually I'll share water brushes. But if you're at home and you've got complete control and you've got a palette of water next to you, I encourage you guys to try just using a regular brush. The reason being is because you can really control the amount of water that goes down and that is super helpful, right? I always start off with a layer of water. So you guys can see I laid down a layer of just water down first um, and then I'm gonna go in and watercolor it over top. And you can see that that layer of water is super helpful to go in and add down a solid layer of color. It makes it so the cardstock is ready to take your color and it's not just gonna seep it all right in. All right, so once I've colored that first layer down, you can see that we've got a nice solid layer of color down there. That again is because the water makes it super helpful to make the color super solid without it sinking right in. Then I'm gonna use a little bit less water and I'm just gonna go in with my color, we can dip into a little bit of water, but I'm gonna go into a more solid area of that color there. And then I'm going to kind of start dabbing this onto my owl there. And it's going to kind of blend out that color and add a little bit of depth and shading to the image. I'm gonna do it on his kind of wings here, wherever those feathers meet, I wanna add a little bit of shading. And you can kind of blend it out. To blend it, all I do is just kind of wipe off my brush a little bit and then I'll just kind of pull out some of that color. I'm gonna do it again, right where his head meets his body. We'll add a little bit of shading. All right, and then we'll throw a little bit of shading down here as well. How awesome is that? All right. How beautiful is that? And I love how easy it is to add that shading down. Um, like I said, I like to kind of keep things simple. So as I'm watercoloring, I add down that layer of water. Once that layer of water is added with that layer of color, then I go in and add my second color layer. I usually do it when the color is still pretty wet. That way it's easy to really get this blended in between colors. If you wait for your layer to dry too much, it's not going to be super easy to blend. And so that's my biggest tip too is like, kind of uh, work in layers here. So you can see I'm not coloring his face. I'm not trying to color in the whole owl. I'm working on a little layer to make sure that this gives really great color. Oh, someone said that they love the names of my inks. Thank you so much. And yeah, I come up with them. Uh, me and my mom kind of sit together and we uh, come up with the, the inks and, and names and things like that. And it's so much fun to kind of create those and have lots of creativity with it. All right. Okay, so then I'm going in again, another layer of water, and then I'll go in with Gur again, 
and some water and add that down. And then of course, get some shading going by just adding down a little bit of that darker color with no water. And how beautiful is this owl turning out? I think it is so much fun, but um, you can always add different, uh, different color owls, make it super fun, maybe make like a bright owl. Um, I think that would be adorable. Um, Kathy Zilski is asking, what kind of paper is this on? This is actually just on my cardstock, surprisingly. Um, it is stark white cardstock. Um, it's 110 pound and it's not really made for water, but like I find that it takes the watercolor and the different water techniques that I do really well. It's, it's honestly the only cardstock I use. And the reason why I like it so much is because I find that even like watercolor paper where it's not supposed to be super textured, sometimes doesn't give me the best stamping result. And so I like that this is super smooth at least, so that I know that I'm gonna get great stamping results and then I can do my watercoloring. I mean, you can see here, I'm not like the most pro watercolorist ever and I'm not adding 30 different layers. And of course, if you did, like it would probably pill, but when you're just adding down a little bit of water to do some coloring like this, it, it is no big deal. And I do lots of backgrounds where I add tons of water too, and it seems to hold up really well, which is one thing I love about my cardstock. But yes, if you're, uh, this goes for anyone. If, if you're ever kind of wondering what cardstock I'm usually using in my videos, it usually is always this, pretty much no matter what technique I do. Um, I love it. I love the versatility. And I love that it's like one thing that I can recommend to, to you for lots of different techniques. All right. Just shading in the owl's eyes. And then we'll shade right up here as well. How fun is that? All right, and then I'm going to go in and I like to add a little bit of warmth sometimes. And for that, I'm gonna use this color that I was talking about, a little bit of over the moon with just a little bit of gur mixed together. And it's gonna create this cool kind of soft yellowish brown color. It creates a little bit of a warmer look. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see on camera there kind of the difference but I love it. And that's how I create the skin tones too. One thing I love about that is you can mix as much brown in as you want to make it darker or lighter, but the, the yellow will just add the warmth, which you need. All right, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of over the moon all over here as well. Maybe we'll even throw a tiny bit into the eyes to make them not so white. All right, and then for the beak, we'll go in with a little bit of orange for the person who told me that they hate orange. <laughs> add a little bit of color down. And to add some shading, you can either go in with the same color, darker like I've been sharing, or you can go in and add a darker color altogether. And here I'm just going in with a little bit of Roar, which is a darker color altogether, and add a little bit of that color down on. The weight of my cardstock is 110 pounds. All right. And then all I'm going to do is go in and start shading this down. Super simple to add a little bit of that color down onto the branch there. I love how easy it is. And then I'll just finally add a little bit of green down into this. How fun is that? All right, lots of you guys are saying that this owl is super cute. Well, thank you so much. That means the world to me. I love being able to share those different tips with you about coloring and things like that. I think it's so helpful. I know some people are a little bit afraid of coloring. It's not their favorite thing in the world. And I think once you learn some of these tips and you really put them into practice, it can be super helpful. With me, I like to use the little Ranger Heat It tool and I just heat set these. You don't need to heat set them. You can set them off to the side to dry. But if I'm trying to keep working on a card pretty quickly, I'll usually go in here and just heat set this. All right. And there is the little owl. Now, what do you guys think? Should I finish off this card or do you guys um, want to see something else? I can finish off the owl card and create a little background as well. Let me know what you guys want to see. And, um, with these, you guys can either use the um, 
use the cut files, or you can go in with your scissors. Now here I like the Fiskars Spring Assist scissors. I know I like shout about these on the rooftops. Um, basically, I love them so much because they spring back out at you so your hands won't get tired, but you're able to just go in and really easily cut these out and get into all of those details and have a nice smooth cut as well. All you guys are saying finish it, so that is what we will do today. We'll finish this on a nice little background. So I'm gonna go in and just fussy cut this out. It's pretty easy to do and I leave a little bit of a white border as well. So I'm just going to cut it out, leave that white border. And the reason why I leave a white border around my image is number one, because I'm lazy and um, I don't want to go into all those little details. I can see like if you're going into all those details, I can see why you hate fussy cutting. But if you're not going into all those details and you're just kind of going around the image like I do, it's pretty easy to cut out right, and to get into all those little details. And then also, um, I like the white border because if I'm adding this onto a colored background, the white border is going to help it stand out from the background, right? It's gonna give me that little bit of contrast that I need to stand out from the color that you're adding down. So that is why it would be super, super helpful um, to leave that little bit of white. All right. Um, someone's talking about my desktop surface. It's like the wood looking surface that I uh, craft on. It's basically a piece of laminate. Um, do I encourage everyone to work on their laminate tables? No. Um, it mainly is just for videos because it gives less of a glare, but that's why I don't use a craft sheet because I don't want it to glare in the camera. But um, I recommend working on a craft sheet. The Ranger craft sheet is really awesome. I was using it last night when I was crafting. Um, but basically, yeah, this just helps for videos um, because it doesn't give as much of a glare as any other surface. Yeah, it's just a piece of laminate. Lots of people are asking about that. I know it's uh, it looks like it shouldn't wipe off as easy as it does because it looks kind of like wood, but it's totally faking you. <laughs> but I usually just say that it's a craft sheet just so you guys know not to work on your table. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to then finish off the card with a background. So here is that really awesome little owl image. And yeah, it's pretty easy to cut out. Of course, like I said, you could use the cut files, which are on Ranger's site. All right. And then, oh, I almost like this. Honestly, that's kind of cute. Like if I had just like a little oval in there, I kind of like that. But I'm going to do one of these stamped backgrounds just to show you how this works. All right. So, ooh. Hmm. Never mind. Never mind. We'll show you one of those stamp backgrounds on a different in a different video. It's coming up in a future video. I think this is more fun. <laughs> I think this is cooler, and I'm gonna show you guys how it kind of works in today's video. So, all right, I'm gonna go in with this larger shape right here, and yeah, I think that's a good spot for it. I'm gonna go in and just tape off this top section. Well, thank you, Kathy. She said, great fussy cutting. Of course. Lots of you guys are saying that you love the owls. We got a lot of requests for matching dyes. Um, yeah. I'll definitely think about dyes for the future. All right, so with this, I'm going to create kind of a sky looking background. So I'm gonna use some blues and green colors. Um, so I'm gonna go in first with a little bit of clear skies. I love this color and I think it'll be great for like a, a sky looking background. So just wiping it off, making sure that it's gonna be a clean color that it gives me. And then we'll go in onto my background and start my blending. All right, so I'm gonna lightly blend in this circle at first. Just go in with a super light hand. It doesn't need to be anything super important, but I'm just going in and blending this out. Super simple to do, really easy. All right, and then once I'm done blending it with clear skies fully, I'm going to go in and add a little bit of shading to one side. So, oh no. <laughs> All right, 
we're live, so that was great. I was looking at the comments as I was trying to like push my um, blending tool back into my pad and it just flew. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna go in here on one edge and just kind of add a little bit of darker color. I love adding some shading. And then I'm gonna go in with another stencil. Here I'm gonna use the tiny diamond stencil. You could throw in the tiny circles or the tiny hearts, anything that you want. And I'm just going to lay it down here and again, we're creating kind of an abstract look. Are there gonna be diamonds in the sky behind an owl? No, but what I love about doing something like this is it just adds a little bit of texture and more shading to it as well. All right, so I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna start off kind of with a heavier hand around this darker area to add darker color down. And then all over this, I'm just gonna keep a pretty light hand because even when you use a light hand, it's still gonna show up on that stencil pretty heavy, all right? and check that out. I love how it looks. I think that it's just beautiful. And um, yeah, it really creates such a bold effect onto this background. All right, so then I'm going to go in, lift this off of the surface. And then I'm going to bring in another shape. And I think, let's see, what should I use for this? I think I wanna use this guy. Yeah, let's add it right there. I'm just gonna use two shapes on today's card. I think this is gonna be fun. And like, all you really need to do is if you just wanna use one shape, you totally could, like you could, totally could put that behind there. But you just wanna create kind of a background that your image is gonna be able to really easily sit on, right? And I think that this is gonna look great. So going in then, taping off some of these circles. And then on this side, I'm gonna use a little bit of, let's see, you know, I'm gonna keep it blue, but I'm gonna use a little bit of Midnight Snack. All right, I'm just gonna go in. And it's a totally different shade of blue, so it's gonna give me a really great look, but you can totally go in with any sort of color that you want. I think that like using opposing colors like we did and the example just gives such a beautiful effect too. And I'm gonna blend a little bit lighter where it overlaps there. It is kind of a dark color, so you're not seeing the overlap as much, but it's still gonna give a beautiful effect. And then a little one with tiny circles. I'm gonna bring this pattern in leave it on top there and then go in and blend this out. And again, I'm starting a little bit heavier handed and then I'm working a little bit lighter as I go across. And check out those beautiful dots that you get on your pattern. How cool is that guys? Like so simple to do, so easy to create such a beautiful background like this. And I love that it's just kind of whimsical and playful and, and super fun for these sort of images. That's why I wanted to release it with this release because there's a lot of cartoon kind of images in it and, and a lot of images that are a little bit more kind of abstract and, and so fun. But of course, like I always say, go back and use this with other products too. I thought it would look great with the lemons that released um, at the beginning of the year. There's lots of different stuff that this would look great with, but like, check out how cute that is. I love it. I love that. All right, so we're going in with our heat tool now. And like, doesn't those little textures just totally bring this to life too? I'm telling you guys, everything combined. It's so fun to have a product line that we're building on now because it's like, you can just go back into other stuff and like, you know, what's gonna work well with what and really use all of your stuff together to create a really great effect. Now I like to heat set some things um, just because um, with ink pads, they might be dry in the surface. You might not feel that they're still wet, but sometimes in the surface they're wet and then adhesive's not gonna stick to it. So I like to just dry it first. And then I'm going to go in and add down a little bit of foam tape. So just peel off a little bit of my foam and then add some down just to make it pop off the card. 
Oh my gosh, love, lots of you guys are saying you love this abstract look. Um, yeah, it is so fun, you know? I was hoping you guys would understand. Because sometimes it's like you, you, you design a stencil like this and you're like, you know, I know what this is supposed to do, but is everyone else gonna get it? And I think you guys really are. And I think it's, it's such a fun one. It's so fun and easy to create just tons of different backgrounds with. And I've always kind of loved the idea of just using shapes to create with because they give so much texture and dimension. And, you know, like I said, is an owl really gonna have these different circles behind it? Probably not, but it does create lots of interest on your card. And it really creates for a great design element. All right, tiny little pieces behind the leaves. And then some little pieces up on its head. Okay. Yes, totally. I think in the packaging, sometimes these products can look a little confusing, but like like Kathy's saying, once once you see it on a card, once you see it being used, you you are getting more ideas then and and I think yeah, you're going to get inspired for sure. All right. I'm going to put him right at the center here, right where both of these um shapes kind of intersect. Cuz I love the look of that. How fun and playful is that? And then I'm going to go in and add him down onto a card base. I'm just going to use my tape runner. Add a little bit of adhesive all the way around. And then we'll add this down. Now I always start at the top of the card base, start in the top corner, go to the top um, right edge, and then I'm going to go and add this down. Give some good pressure. And there we have our card. Now I'm gonna go in as well and use a sentiment. I always say my favorite way to pick sentiments is by pulling out the set. Oh yeah, I think it would be so much fun to do a video with Kathy. I think that'd be awesome. Um, and I'll do, I love to pull out the set and like figure out what's gonna fit the best on here. What do you guys think? I'm thinking you're wise beyond your years. That's kind of a fun one. I think that's a super fun one. And of course that could be for birthdays or anything like that as well. We'll pull out one of my acrylic blocks. And we're gonna stamp down the sentiment. Just add down some black ink. And where should I add it? Maybe right there. I'm thinking right there. It kind of tucks in nicely. How fun is that? I love it. How cool. So there is my finished owl card. I'm so glad that you guys loved seeing how to create this and work alongside me to create the finished card for today with those coloring tips, using the different stencils that I shared. You guys even got a peek into the different mermaid tails. I can share this one now that it's kind of nice and dry. It's gained even more shine as it's dried and I think it is just beautiful, but there are tons of different examples that we created throughout today's video on the different mermaid tales and backgrounds and how to really step up your projects with the new release.